This is Story Recapped. Today I'm going to explain a drama, mystery, and thriller film called Stoker. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. A young girl named India Stoker plays in her backyard. India pierces a wart on her foot and squeezes out pus. India is fond of the outdoors and activities like climbing trees. On a tree's branch is a gift for India. She just turned 18. A cake awaits her inside. However, the celebration is cut short when the news that her father, Richard, passed away. At the funeral, India's mother, Evelyn, becomes emotional. In the distance, a man stands eerily. In the kitchen, two caretakers gossip about Richard's death. Mrs. McGarrick, the head caretaker, enters the room and they quickly get back to work. She then accompanies India. Mrs. McGarrick notices that India's shoes are too small for her, so she asks if India has seen her birthday present. This time, India's present wasn't shoes. Instead, it was a key. All this time, India believed that her father gave her new shoes every year for her birthday. However, they were from someone else instead, and no one bothered to tell her who. India asks Mrs. McGarrick what the key opens, but she doesn't know. In the next room, Evelyn introduces Richard's brother and India's uncle, Charlie. He was the man standing out in the distance at the funeral. Charlie was gone for years and it took his brother's death for him to return. Being her shy self, India doesn't welcome or even speak to her uncle. Now alone, India lies in bed surrounded by shoes she had outgrown and memories that will ever forever be just memories. Meanwhile, Evelyn shows taxidermied animals that India killed to Charlie and other guests. Richard was very proud of the hunter India became. Night arrives and India seems very wary of Charlie. He encounters Mrs. McGarrick and an uneasy face dawns upon her. Charlie notices India's suspecting eyes, so he tries to confront her. India escapes to a room while Evelyn grabs Charlie's attention. India sits on a staircase and breathes a sigh of relief. However, up the stairs is Charlie, and he calls out to her. India wasn't aware that her father had a brother. She walks up to the same level as Charlie to look him in the eyes. Charlie then informs India that he'll be staying with them for a while. The following day, India wakes up to see Charlie shoveling outside. He oddly explains how the soil's integrity makes it suitable for digging. Later that day, India is playing outside once again when she hears Charlie and Mrs. McGarrick arguing. Later in the afternoon, Evelyn has just woken up and asks India where Mrs. McGarrick is. India denies seeing her even though she did earlier. Evelyn plans to go out, but India reminds her that her husband just died. Evelyn then reveals that her relationship with Richard grew stale in recent years. He got older and became more distant from her. Later that day, Charlie starts up his convertible, and with him is Evelyn. India stayed at home to snoop around Charlie's room. Outside, Charlie and her mother return home. Instantaneously, India finds a gift similar to what was on the tree branch before. Before she can open it, Evelyn asks her to come downstairs. In the kitchen, Evelyn and Charlie drink some wine. Mrs. McGarrick is still missing, and Evelyn worries because she can't cook. Charlie can and he offers to make dinner. Charlie requests India to bring the ice cream he bought down to the freezer. She is reluctant, but Evelyn orders her to follow. In the basement, India approaches the freezer and puts in the ice cream. She then quickly returns upstairs. Night arrives and the three are having dinner. Evelyn compliments Charlie's cooking and remembers once again how Richard used to cook for her. Charlie points out that India has licked her plate clean. He's happy India enjoyed his cooking, but she remains indifferent. Charlie offers ice cream for dessert, but India is not in the mood. So, Evelyn asks her to play the piano instead. India still refuses, and she asks her mother why she didn't tell her about Charlie. Evelyn also didn't know Charlie. He never came home, and Richard resented him for it in some way. The conversation makes Evelyn emotional, so she leaves. The two are now alone at the table. While India plays with the wine bottle, Charlie slides over his glass. India takes a sip of wine, and Charlie's eyes glimmer creepily. He just wants to be India's friend, but she deems it unnecessary since they're already family. The next day, at school, India is in art class. A classmate named Pitts shows India his naked drawing of her. Behind them is another classmate, Whip, who isn't entertained by the bullying. School ends and all the students clamor by the curb. They gossip about Charlie, who's waiting by his car for India. India ignores him and takes the bus instead. Behind the bus, Charlie is in his convertible following them. The girls are entranced by him and they scramble to get a better look. As they near the home, India still refuses to get in Charlie's car. Inside, Evelyn is asleep on her chair and India looks at her mother in disappointment. The next day, before India leaves for school, Charlie offers her an umbrella and warns her about possible rain. She ignores him again and she returns home all wet. The umbrella hangs by the gate, but India still refuses to use it. A wet and frustrated India grows angrier as she sees her mother flirting with Charlie by the piano. They notice she's home and invite her to come join them. The following day, Evelyn is all dressed up to play tennis. Charlie, wearing Richard's clothes, will play with her. India returns inside to greet her aunt Gwen, whose visit is unannounced. During dinner, Evelyn asks Gwen when she'll leave. 
Gwen is supposed to stay for just a few days, but she wants to spend more time with India. Evelyn puts on a smile, but she doesn't seem happy. Charlie and Gwen reconnect, and Evelyn mentions that Charlie took time off from his life in Europe to accompany them. Gwen is surprised at this, and Charlie leaves all of a sudden. Gwen then asks to talk to Evelyn alone after dinner. Gwen worries about Charlie living with them, and her opinions offend Evelyn. Charlie tries to ease the tension and successfully stops the argument from escalating. After dinner, Gwen is about to leave to spend the night at a hotel. She tries to make it up to Evelyn by inviting her for breakfast the next day, but Evelyn refuses. India wants Gwen to stay, but Gwen believes that it would be better if she leaves. At the hotel, Gwen is visibly disgusted by the state of her room. Back at home, India scans a book and flips between pages of a wave and a seashell. The image reminds her of ice cream, and so she goes downstairs to fetch some. Meanwhile, Gwen calls reception to ask if they see her missing phone. As India opens the freezer, Gwen opens her door to find her phone. Evelyn also seems busy. She grooms herself and puts on her reddest shade of lipstick. She goes up to Charlie's room, but he's nowhere to be seen. Concurrently, Gwen is trying to call her phone from a payphone booth. Suddenly, she sees Charlie outside. He tracked her down to return her phone and take away her life. In the basement, India sees Mrs. McGarrick's body in the freezer, realizing Charlie killed her. The next day, India avoids Charlie after school. She walks through another exit, and nearby, a group of teenage boys is hanging out. They block India's paths and make fun of her situation with her uncle. Pitts thinks India's mom is doing the deed with her uncle and that India has been joining in on their incestual fun. India doesn't appreciate what he said and approaches him. In the distance is Charlie, spectating them. As Pitts winds up a punch, India meets his fist with a pencil. Before he can fight back, Whip arrives and scares them away. Whip tries talking to India, but she ignores him. Back at home, India expresses her frustration by playing the piano. Then, Charlie plays with her. Charlie pushes her aside and performs amazingly, suggesting that he is not at all a beginner. India doesn't back down and plays with him. They create mesmerizing melodies that bring much-needed liveliness and artistry to the dull and silent room. Charlie reaches to the other side of the piano, and they feel each other's warmth. India feels hot and heavy as her uncle touches her. Her feet start to move on their own, but then Charlie stops playing. He leans in, and India turns towards him. Charlie disappears. It was all in India's head. She had a sort of weird, psychosexual fantasy of her own murderous and mysterious uncle. After a while, India lies on her bed, defeated, but at the same time satisfied. She goes downstairs to eavesdrop on Evelyn and Charlie. Charlie sees India but ignores her. Charlie and Evelyn engage in a playful conversation, giving each other sultry looks. Finally, they dance. The night ends with a passionate kiss. Outside, India sees Charlie groping her mother's chest. Charlie knows India saw them, and he notices her running away. India finds herself in a part of town she isn't familiar with. Luckily, she sees Whip. India calls out to him, and Whip's fellow bikers leave them to give them privacy. He asks India where she would like to go. The night takes them past the train tracks. Whip questions why a conservative girl like India is out in the middle of the night. India has unlocked a part of herself that she didn't know existed, a primal urge and the desire to be touched. India runs, and Whip chases after her. She pins Whip to a tree, and they start making out. The steamy moment stops all of a sudden as India is a little too hard. The blood fuels Whip even more, and he forces himself onto her. India tries to stop him, but she can't. Whip removes his belt, and a man is seen behind him. It's Charlie, also removing his belt, which is used to bind Whip. India kicks Whip repeatedly, and Charlie looks at her with proud eyes. They return home, and India goes straight to the bathroom. She removes all her dirty clothes, but no amount of washing can help regain her stained innocence. India masks her cries with the sound of shower, and she remembers what happened. India got distracted, and this allowed Whip to get on top of her. Charlie strangled Whip until his neck broke, and they returned home with the dead body in the trunk. India is still in tears, but when she remembers Whip's neck breaking, she feels an alien sensation and is pushed to touch herself. India reaches climax and an odd revelation that murder satisfies her. After a while, India enters her mother's room to ask Evelyn to brush her hair. Evelyn doesn't want to, so India offers to brush her hair instead. While India brushes her mother's hair, India reveals that she saw Evelyn and Charlie kissing earlier. Evelyn is surprised that she didn't notice her. India learned her sneakiness from her father. During their hunting trip, she was taught to be wary of her environment, to know when to do something bad to avoid something worse, and when it mattered, to take a deep breath and shoot. Another day arrives and India is in her father's study. She checks the drawers and notices that the bottommost drawer is locked. With the key given to her, she opens the drawer. India pulls out a gun and a box filled with old photos of Richard, Charlie, and their youngest brother, Jonathan. As India flips through them, she realizes that Jonathan isn't in the newer pictures. There is another box. Inside it are letters for India that she's never received. 
After closing all the blinds, India reads the letters. They're all from Charlie, and he wrote about all his adventures and how much he misses her. The letters show that Charlie has a clear obsession with India. India isn't concerned at all. Instead, she's curious and in awe of her uncle. India steps up the stairs with the letters in hand. She returns to pick up some of the letters she drops. At the back, it states that the sender's address is Crawford Institute, a mental hospital. Immediately, India calls the sheriff's office. She sees Charlie outside with a smile on his face and shears in his hand. For some reason, India hangs up the phone. She meets Charlie by the door and asks him to leave before Evelyn wakes up. Charlie wants to share what happened to Richard, but India wants to know more about what happened to Jonathan instead. Years ago, Jonathan just learned to climb up the stairs. All of Richard's attention was given to him, and this left Charlie feeling neglected. On a fateful summer day, Charlie was playing with Jonathan. Jonathan slid right into a sandpit. Instead of helping him, Charlie used the sandcastle he created to bury his brother alive. He had lived in a mental institution ever since. One day, Richard visited Charlie who was about to be discharged from the mental hospital. On their way home, Richard stopped in front of a convertible. It was a gift to Charlie. He also prepared everything Charlie needs to start a new life in New York. Like a child, Charlie teared up because Richard won't allow him to see India. Richard wanted Charlie as far away as possible from India and his family. Upon hearing this, Charlie walked out and puked by the river. When he returned, he was different. Charlie brought a sinister aura and a sharp rock, which he used to kill Richard. India slaps Charlie and asks why he came back after all those years. On the day of India's 18th birthday, Charlie was done waiting. He did everything he did to be with her. Charlie kneels and opens his gift for India. It's a new pair of high heels, symbolizing her transition to womanhood. Charlie asks India to come with him to New York. India happily accepts, and as Charlie is about to touch her cheek, they notice Evelyn looking at them. Evelyn sees India's new shoes, apologizes, and walks out. Night arrives and Evelyn asks why couples have children. She believes that there comes a time where a relationship needs a child. They become a means to a fresh start, a clean canvas where they can paint the child to become the people they dreamt of becoming. Evelyn doesn't see India that way. She despises India and wishes her to fail like her. Evelyn leaves the dining room and invites Charlie up to her room. He tells India to pack her bags and they will be leaving soon. Charlie enters Evelyn's room to say goodbye. She won't allow them to leave because throughout Charlie's stay, she realized something. From her husband's leaving on India's birthday party to Aunt Gwen's sudden silence, all hints point to Charlie and his ill intentions. Charney corners Evelyn and kisses her. Evelyn begins to unbuckle his belt and the kissing leads to the floor. Charlie pins Evelyn down and calls India to watch. While he strangles her, India appears in front of the door with a rifle. She aims it at Charlie, and just like her father taught her, India takes a deep breath and shoots. Evelyn survives and India checks if Charlie is still alive. She stands up with her face half covered in blood. The next day, a new grave is in the backyard. In the garage, India covers a pair of shears with a bag. She drives off in Charlie's convertible while her mother is still asleep. The sheriff then pulls her over for speeding. India flirts with him and with her new acquired taste for blood, she stabs the sheriff. India takes a closer look and smiles at the man crawling for his life. With her rifle, India takes a deep breath and shoots. India didn't love her mother for sure and she didn't shoot her uncle to save her. She shot him because her love for her father overpowered her hatred for everything else. Knowing Charlie killed Richard made India forget her father's lessons for a moment, but in the end, she remembered. So, India did something bad, which was to kill Charlie, to avoid something even worse in letting Charlie get what he wanted from the very start. Her. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.